Good morning, apparitionists, apparitioners. Jesus Christ, it almost sounds like some sort of religious cult, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, folks. Today we're at the site of the Southern Aurora train crash. Happened on the 7th of February, 1969, at approximately 10 past 7 in the morning, which it is now approximately 10 past 7 in the morning. So we're here uh, as a memorial to the nine victims that tragically died in the accident and the 117 other people that were injured. Um, this is a memorial to all the emergency services that responded and acted very quickly in dealing with this tragedy. So the Southern Aurora collided head on with a goods train um, traveling from Melbourne. It's believed that the train driver from the Southern Aurora had a medical episode. Um, he had a heart attack, a fatal heart attack, uh, and left him incapacitated at the controls. So the train was traveling along at 120 kilometers an hour, nobody at the helm. Um, passengers were uh, getting up, having their breakfast, you know, unbeknown what was eventually going to happen at this very spot we're at. So luckily it happened this time of the morning, um, most of the people were up out of the sleepers and they were having breakfast or in the lounge car um, enjoying their morning. Um, there was a goods train heading from Melbourne up to Wangaratta I think and it was a whole lot of different circumstances. Both trains were delayed and they were supposed to, to intercept each other further up the line but because of the delays um, they had to try and intercept them around here at Violet Town. Now the goods train was supposed to go on the Bendigo Loop so then the Southern Aurora could just travel past and the train would go around the loop and then back on its way. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, before the goods train could get to the loop, the Southern Aurora was already barreling down the track. No way of stopping it. Now, the Southern Aurora was travelling at about 120 kilometres an hour. And the goods train had reduced speed from 80 kilometres an hour to 54 kilometres an hour, I think. So, the sudden impact of both trains travelling together was a total of 172 kilometres an hour at the point of impact. Now the goods train being heavier um, didn't wear much of the impact but the sudden Aurora unfortunately she wore the brunt of it being the lighter train. There was 190 people on board 117 injured and nine fatalities, unfortunately. Um, two drivers, one conductor, an electrician, and five passengers. It's a good thing that most of the people were up at this time because if they all had been asleep, if it had been earlier in the morning, uh, unfortunately the fatalities would have been a lot more. Now the force of the impact propelled the Southern Aurora and seven, several of the goods train wagons into the air. Six of the carriages were derailed and completely crushed by the other wreckages. The two le leading carriages, Telescope into the rear of the locomotive and two others rode on top and suspended them about 30 feet in the air. So you can imagine folks, the trains coming in, sudden impact, the force of the impact, pushing the aurora as it's going. So you've got Carriages spilling this way, that way, you've got ones going over the top. Oh. It's amazing there wasn't more deaths. It's amazing. 
Now because of the impact, um, there was a lot of diesel spilt around the area. Uh, it ignited and it led to the sudden aurora and engulfed the sudden aurora in flames. People were screaming and crying, children crying, people scrambling out broken windows. Emergency services turned up, they got into work straight away, um, fighting the fire, helping people, getting people out of there, getting them off to surrounding hospitals. Um, there was a few people sent to Euroa, there was people sent to uh, Wangaratta, there was people sent to Marupna. Um, the community of Violet Town was beautiful, they just absolutely got together helped everybody and oh man just talking about it it gives me chills I can almost feel the carnage that went on that day and through the night but not only that the police also had to control crowds because you know people got wind of it rubberneckers come to have a look so the police were totally busy, they had to keep numbers back, they had to make sure everything was going right. It was just a hell of a day, would have been a hell of a day. So because this is a memorial video, I'm not going to do any paranormal investigation here, I don't think it's right. Not on the day the tragedy happened. And this is a dedication to all the people involved, all the people who were out and had to live with the traumatic events that happened that day. Our hearts go out to you. Right, so I'm going to put the, um, the camera on the handheld and I'm going to walk you around the area where the accident happened, you'll still see the remaining scars today that happened 53 years ago. So bear with me while I adjust the camera onto the handle. Now I'll start over here, as you can see. This area is about one kilometer away from Violet Town. One kilometer after Violet Town. So Violet Town is back up that way. That's heading towards Sydney. And if we go around this way, heading towards Melbourne. We'll take you over to the sign. Sorry about the birds folks but <laughs> it's nature and I can't do much about that. So as you can see this sign, the carnage, you can see the carnage. It was just terrible. So I'll take you back over the other side now, you can, I'll show you some um, areas over there. So bear with me while we walk folks. It's a beautiful morning. But apparently the, um, when this train accident happened in uh, 1969, it was a very hot February morning. Now, God knows whether the, the locomotive cabins had air conditioning back then or not. I mean, you could just imagine, you know, how stuffy and hot it would be at the front of a locomotive. And of course, after this accident, um, a lot of things changed in the, 
in the rail industry. Um, there was more physical testing on train drivers to make sure that this sort of incident would never happen again. Bear with me folks, we've got a car coming through. So all this was covered in wreckage. Now I'm assuming that there was only one track back then folks. Um, this is going back 53 years ago so I'm assuming that there was only one track. Now it's a double track so no chances of anything like this ever happening again. So we can go over here, there's another sign over here, so that would have been where a lot of um, the wreckage was as well. Bear with me folks, I'm just going to... And this is the east side view of the southern aurora. So some of the... Tr some of the cars stayed upright. It was more the front cars or the brunt of the impact. So this is another view of the east side. And this was part of the goods train and the southern aurora. Now these are coloured pictures folks. Uh, in Hickney colour. I think it was back then, 1969. <laughs> um, but you can see the carnage. It was just a terrible, terrible event that happened. I'm really amazed that, that there wasn't more lives lost. Totally surprised. So I'd say this area it would have been where uh, most of the um, collision was and they've now put a monument, rock monument to mark the spot where the people lost their lives now you can see down by that fence line there that it's still all buckled and uh, so I'd say it's scars from from the incident the accident. Right, so here we're inside um, an S-Class locomotive which would have been the very type that um, the Southern Aurora had a tragic accident in. It's pretty hard to see in here folks. It's cramped, it's very hot and back in the day they would have had no air conditioning for the driver in here. Okay. This is an outside view of what the S-Class locomotive was like back in the day. It's a very retro style front end on it. Which I think the chap said that they call it a bulldog. Bulldog front end. Very beautiful old girl. Very big. So the locomotive would attach to the trailers and it would look like just one train, not the locomotive being through.
the out girl up. So folks, that was a, a review of the um, Southern Aurora train incident that happened in 1969. Um, I hope you liked this video. Um, I didn't really get to research it as much as what I wanted to. It was sort of a rush thing uh, because I knew the anniversary was coming up so soon. Um, I hope you liked this video and I hope you subscribe and ring the notification bell and give the thumbs up and we will see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Okay folks, the sun's up now so the sunnies are on. Right, now I'm standing outside the memorial gardens that was erected after the Southern Aurora train crash. Um, this is in memory of the nine lives that were lost and the 117 other people that were injured out of the 190 people that were on board. Uh, so the Southern Aurora was a link between Melbourne and Sydney, a distance of 956 kilometres. It was an overnight express service, contained sleepers, you could have meals, you could lounge. You can even smoke back then, folks. Yeah, you can you can smoke on the trains, not a problem. So you wouldn't have to jump outside and um, or hang out the window and have a cigarette. Right, the Southern Aurora this started on the fourteenth of April, nineteen sixty-two. Made its maiden voyage into Spencer Street Station and operated backwards and forwards two times a day. The Southern Aurora consisted of 14 stainless steel cars, one luggage, one van, power van, a dining car, lounge car, and 10 sleepers. And these 10 sleepers are ranged from uh, roomettes to twinettes, depending on how much you want to pay. The Southern Aurora was for first class travellers only. Now, it operated until 1986. It ran for a total of 24 years. Uh, within that time, in 1969, the Southern Aurora train crash, which I suspect would have been a reason why there was a decline in numbers in travelling. They tried many things to try and keep it operating, like um, putting other stops in to let people on, um, having a car carriage so you could take your car with you. But when a sinking ship is going down, there's not much you can really do to save it. So it lasted for 24 years of operation, and now they have the XPT, which is the Express Sydney to Melbourne train. And the class system doesn't exist anymore, folks. <laughs> that was 50 odd years ago. <laughs> we all have one class now. Poor. All of us. <laughs> So I'm going to take the camera off the handheld and I'm going to walk you around the memorial garden and see it's such a nice spot that they've made a memorial of these people. So bear with me folks, I'm going to dismount the camera and we'll do a walk around. Cheers. Okay folks, as you can see I've now got the camera on the handheld and we're going to go for a walk in the small memorial garden that they've found. Um, done as a tribute. <coughs> so we'll go over here to the first sign. Welcome to Southern Aurora Memorial Gardens. So this is just a, the community got together and built this gardens in memory of the train crash that happened here 
53 years ago. All right, we'll go get a little bit more. Just a nice little walk through. Sign would like to thank all the ones that were involved in the project. Sorry about the shaking, guys, but you can't do much when you're on handheld. I'm trying to keep it as still as I possibly can while walking. Now, because the, the driver was incapacitated, uh, they believed that the, the signals were working properly. So there was no fault with the signaling. It was just that the driver was incapacitated. So here you can see, folks, this is a painting replica of the Southern Aurora. Beautiful old retro diesel. Well, this was uh, the age of diesel, folks. Back in 1969, they were getting out of... Um, well, steam had gone by then, but... It was getting more luxurious. People were living well. As you can see, folks, the front cars were the sleepers. And the rear cars were the dining lounge and smoking area. <laughs> yeah, smokes. A lot of people loved the ciggies back then. More signs, people. Sudden Aurora, probably human error. Can't be human error when you have a medical episode. God, the poor bloke had a heart attack and bloody died. And blame it on human error. see people with the shadowing and just another sign newspaper articles back in the day about it awards granted so it was obviously the, the people got rewards for being heroes and and helping everybody out in those tragic circumstances. It's amazing, you know, when something tra tragic happens, people just band together, don't give a stuff about their own lives, just trying to help everybody else. That's what's good about human nature. But then it was different back then, folks. People were a lot more friendlier than what they are today. People don't really want to know you today. They'll see an accident and they'll just keep going. Don't want to know. Not my problem. It's a sad world we live in now. So as you can see folks, they've got an old carriage, probably wasn't from the Southern Aurora, it was just of that era. And 
with this on says uh, it was a sleeping carriage. The the windows say otherwise. It's locked, unfortunately I can't get in there folks, so Well, this is pretty much all of the garden. Just a nice little area to come have a barbecue, picnic. Read about days gone by. It's going to be a beautiful day today, folks. Another day in the 30s, I'd say. Oh well, we'll just um, head back out, and there's a sign at the at the back of the sign. Thank you for visiting. So this was the memorial garden, folks. So just recapping people, that was the Southern Aurora, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, um, leave a non-offensive comment down below, give a thumbs up, subscribe, do the thingy, and we'll see you on the next one, cheers for now, bye bye.